Welcome to this first part lecture of seminar tonight. Here I like to share the beauty of the simplicity in the classical period which will include harmony, sonority and texture, material and structure. The first aspect of the simplicity in the classical era is harmony, which was very closely tied to the tonal center, the very strong gravitational pull to the tonic. But this simplicity in harmony does not mean boring or plain. And I'm going to show you how Beethoven colors the harmony. He made what was ordinary to become extraordinary. Here is an example. What is this A sharp 7 doing here? Well, this is just 5 7 of 6. It is just a secondary dominant. And let us take a look at the bigger picture in this transitional passage. What extraordinary is the treatment Beethoven did in this passage? So here is that 5 of 6 in the bigger picture. Then it goes to 6 or this sharp manner. We have a voice crossing here at the inner voices there. That alone enriches the harmonic progression. We also have here another secondary dominant, 5 of 5, alternating with 7 of 5 that goes for the full 4 bars. Then it resolves to 5 or in other term, it modulates to 5th higher. Beethoven could have started the secondary theme right here because we have arrived at the key of the second theme. But he did not. Instead, he creatively inserted another altered chord. Here is the augmented chord, also called the German 6. And then Look how long the delayed arrival of the second theme in C sharp major. Ah, and observe the interval third related harmonic progressions from the red color C sharp major to the blue German 6 chord or A7 chord. How refreshing it sounds. Wasn't he a genius musician? Here Beethoven was skillfully playing with a simple harmony to make the progressions colorful. And at the same time, this process of delaying the final arrival successfully built up a very high intensity for the arrival of the second theme. Let's hear how does it sound. Here is a simple but amazing way how Beethoven kept his audience waiting in anticipations for the arrival of the second theme. So what do we learn from this passage? Beethoven prolonged the anticipations and delayed the resolutions, and that is playfully and creatively building up intensity so that the arrival of the second theme becomes greatly anticipated. Here is the ending of the same passage in the recapitulations. Pay attention to the German 6 chord. Here is an example of how full of surprises Beethoven was. He took the German 6 from the first movement to open the second movement. The mastery of the classical composers are in making the ordinary to become extraordinary. The simplicity of the harmony in the classical period is far from boring or plain. And now let us move to the second point. The classical period has its distinct sonority of the tone produced. Because the instrument pianoforte or the forte piano at that time was relatively new, actually we could enjoy much the pure tone 
of the instrument. To me, it is a luxury. And this literally means very discreet use of pedal. For example, in this opening, I would enjoy the pure tone of the chord for a while before I press down the pedal to add color or to connect the chords. I will play here both examples of pedaling. Here how the red pedaling will sound like. And here how is the blue pedaling will sound like. The blue or the classical pedaling give more chance for the pure tone to ring. Here is a good example of showing the two main functions of pedaling. First is to connect the sound as illustrated here in green. I use this pedaling to connect the left hand. And second is to color the sound as illustrated in the blue. Now we move to discuss the beauty of simplicity in the classical period in terms of sonority and texture. In general, the texture is not as thick as that of the romantic period or later. Thin but rich. Rich in what way? Imagine there are several light bulbs of different wattage. The higher wattage, the brighter the light. Each tone produced must have the intensity of projections to the point that it will spark, shine, and come to life. Thinner texture means less notes available. And therefore, its note is more precious and more exposed. I particularly need to sharpen the tone projections for the lower register, especially in running notes like in this example. Now let us move to the next aspect of simplicity, material and structure. A different approach from the preceding Baroque period with its polyphonic writing, tossing around the theme. The classical period put more emphasis on making the most efficient use of the motif by developing the motif. Beethoven was one of the last composers of the classical period, but he was the first to place the highest importance of effective and efficient use of motif for every piece he wrote since his Opus 1. It is not just using the motif efficiently and effectively, Beethoven was able to use it creatively and of course beautifully. Here is the score of the introduction and the main theme. What is the connection? To me at first, just the pedal point and the anacrusis. But here I'm going to show you something more, a lot more. Here on top is the outline of the melody that Beethoven wrote. And if I consider these two notes highlighted in red as improvisatory notes, then I found beneath the surface the three note motif. Such motivic manipulation is quite common in compositional technique. Here we have the reverse order of the fragments. At first the purple, then the blue, but then now blue goes first, followed by the purple. And still, a couple bars later, Beethoven was playing around with this motif. Next, what came to my observations was the balancing gesture. Going down scale, I give the color yellow here. Whether Beethoven did this consciously or not, what matter is the fact that his melodic line is so perfectly balanced, behind its freedom and flexibility. Remember, Beethoven was a master at improvisation. Here is more observations of how perfectly balanced and simple beneath the flowery surface. The last observations I'm going to show you now Balance is the center point of the classical movement at the end of the 18th century. Here, journey begins with this slow C sharp. Going up an octave higher. And then, each segment of the phrase 
go to C sharp and then the next one and then the blue one the orange one and then the blue one and the last blue one is a long one there is a strong gravitational pull to the C sharps I doubt Beethoven was aware of the C-sharps playing a role as the note center. However, Beethoven was highly educated regarding the classical idealisms of a balanced structure. Last question, why the genre sonata with its sonata allegro form was so common in the classical period? The answer belongs to the spirit of simplicity. The audience was familiar with the form that helped them to follow the flow of the music. But then, composers find detours to surprise and entertain their audience. For example, a slow introduction was quite common, but still it never failed to entertain the audience because it leaves them with a puzzle. What kind of connection that the introduction has to the main theme? The audience were quite well informed about the sonata allegro form, the expositions, the development, and the recapitulations. So what surprises Beethoven had for them in this sonata? I believe the audience were familiar with the fact that if they listened to the sonatas of Beethoven, they would expect a lot of adventure in the development of the theme with this composer. And anywhere could be a development section for Beethoven. And indeed, it was very true with this sonata. As I have shown you earlier, even the exposition itself is a development of the introduction. And you can expect that the coda is also a development section. But here it is relatively brief. The audience enjoy his genius. Now, at the end, what does this do me good as a performer or an audience to figure out all of this? Simplicity means few materials, but with the creativity and craftsmanship of the composer, there come numerous variations on the motif. Isn't this beautiful? The process of how a piece came into existence. But beside these technical revelations and discoveries, there is something more. Simplicity is not simplistic. There are a lot of complex and sophisticated contents beneath and within. Simplicity is the spirit that is sincere and unpretentious. And here I dwell in this beauty. And it is my hope that you will enjoy as much as I do dwelling in the beauty of the sincerity of music creations and music making. We must be able to wrap all the complexity of the music and be able to present the simplicity from the classical period. And that is the greatest challenge in performing music from the classical period. May the spirit of simplicity from the classical period come to life in the music we hear or we play today.